All right, welcome for our next presentation. We have um, two projects from the University of Chicago um, in which we are going to um, have multiple presenters talk about. I first want to introduce Dr. Tamar Heller. She is a distinguished professor and the head of the Department of Disability and Human Development uh, University of Illinois at Chicago and director of its University Center of Excellence in Develop Developmental Disabilities for the State of Illinois and its Family Clinic. Uh, she's also directed the Rehabilitation Research and Training Center on Developmental Disabilities and Health and Family Support. And she's written over 200 publications, including six books, um, focusing on family support, intervention and policies, self-determination, health promotion, and life course transitions of people with disabilities. Um, she'll be presenting um, with Dr. Maureen Dune, who's the co-founder and managing partner of the Autism Angels Group, which has fiscal sponsorship under the umbrella of the Organization for Autism Research, a former National Science Foundation Fellow and Kaufman um, Entrepreneurship Fellow. Dr. Dune serves as an uh, adjunct assistant professor at the Department of Disability and Human Development at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where she's helped spearhead technology dri driven initiatives and in addressing gaps in autism services, including receiving a seed grant from the Discovery Partners Institute for the Autism and Innovati Innovation Initiative. Um, and lastly, Helen Rottier is a graduate student in disability studies at the University of Illinois at Chicago. She's a graduate research assistant and teaching assistant in the Department of Disabilities and Human Development and a collaborating researcher at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. She's also the student coordinator of the Chicago Coalition for Autistic and Neurodivergent Students. And her research is focused on academic access, ableism, and post-secondary post education experiences of autistic and neurodivergent students with additional research on how autistic people and communities produce knowledge. All right, I'm gonna let you take it away from here. Um, Dr. Heller, and I am going to get the screen all scared away. Um, I just wanted to say a few words uh, to introduce these uh, wonderful panelists that will be talking with you. I want to say we have uh, three different strands of research as part of the TAP Autism. Uh, I think later in the afternoon, you'll hear Mark Dixon and his group talking about their behavioral interventions and the research, the exciting research they're doing in that arena. And this morning, you will hear uh, from uh, Maureen Dunn about the technology work that she's doing with autism, which is really, um, uh, really innovative. And uh, she's developed um, all kinds of platforms and really understands the cognitive science behind uh, the technology and uh, working with people with autism. So we're very excited to have her be part of uh, the TAP research. And secondly, you'll have a very different type of presentation from Helen Rodier, who is, uh, uh, describes herself as uh, neurodiverse, autistic. She's a PhD student and uh, is also running support groups uh, and, and sort of, uh, you know, peer kinds of groups uh, with people across different colleges. Uh, this is really her passion. So I think it's going to be really interesting to get uh, both perspectives. So I'm going to turn it over to Maureen. Hi, good. Thank you, Tamar, for that kind introduction. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk about two separate initiatives and pilot programs in the technology and autism space. Um, if we could move to slide two. Please. Um, I don't have control over the slide. So uh, if Shannon, uh, could you move to slide two? I just did, is it not showing up? Um, not on my screen. 
Okay, let me fix that. Yeah. Okay. If you want to keep on going, I'll fix it on my uh, end. Okay, so um, well, when on slide two just kind of has a, a uh, shows visually, you know, basically the two different um, pilots I'm going to talk about, which are are pretty different. They're both involved technology and different supports in different ways, but um, address different age groups of students on the autism spectrum. And the first is really um, an online telehealth platform for teaching social skills with a focus on perspective taking and theory of mind. And the goal of the second program is to offer neurodivergent friendly learning spaces to learn technical skills and prepare for, 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 for careers in a world that we all know is increasingly um, where technology is increasingly becoming important in such a rapidly evolving employment landscape. And in particular, there's um, been some inclusive coding boot camps where that have been offered and I'll talk a little bit later about um, how those also have transitioned to online um, since the pandemic. Um, so Sharon, Shan, are you able to, it's kind of hard to, it, it, the visuals are pretty important to the presentation. Is it, are you able to, to move, the, move the slide to the next slide? How is that? Is that on there now? Does anyone see the, see any movement here? <laughs> No. I, I, I'm on the, I still see the first slide. Um, okay, is there, is there a way you can allow me to share my screen? Yeah. I, that one. might just be okay. easier. Here, one second. Can everyone see my screen? Did that work? Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so so um, I'm kind of move past this here. Um, and so I, I think, you know, um, there's a, been a lot of, of debate and conversation recently. Well, why should we consider technology plat platforms to augment service deliberately? Delivery, obviously, you know, um, we don't want to replace the in-person programs, that's important for so many reasons, but as we've seen, you know, especially since the onset of the pandemic, um, that there's been, a, you know, a need for uh, some, some, some innovative types of, of programs and solutions. And um, there's always been that need, especially in rural remote communities. But I think since the pandemic, there has been this rapid regulation, deregulation of telehealth services. And that, that includes policy changes that allow for telehealth services to be allowed in a person's home. Um, and it's really, it's believed, we'll see kind of what happens, we'll see how things evolve, but it's believed that a lot, that some of these changes at least will, re, will remain or at least won't be set to what, you know, where it was in terms of pre-pandemic standards. Um, you know, at the same time, we want to always make sure we're cautious, right, as, as professionals and, and that we're only offering evidence-based programs. And um, we really need more research on remote delivery to better understand what types of methods and curriculums um, with remote service delivery options work, you know, and, and trying to understand better, are they as effective as in-person therapy options? What, um, what, uh, what, what does the data look like? And we know some, from some past limited research um, that uh, there is some promising results with regards at least to social skills training. Um, we know like Sanchez et al. in 2017, um, uh, demonstrated the effectiveness of some social skills, um, more telehealth type of, of options. And there's been um, a number of research, published research articles by David Wack, Wacker and his colleagues over at Iowa um, that have showed um, some promising uh, directions and results. And then also, um, I think it was CAP in 2012 in the journal Autism um, discussed how uh, kids with autism, how technology, um, can sometimes lead to increased enjoyment and engagement, which also could be obviously important to the effectiveness. And so with, um, with, with this tool, this is really, a, was a, a pilot study um, and our goal was really to develop a remote tool that would augment in-person solutions, not necessarily replace them, um, but for, for social skills and to test this really as, as a methodology. Um, and, and, and this is a 3D story world that was um, built uh, uh, from scratch, from the ground up, with with um, uh, with a combination of, of game designers and autism experts and um, engineers and uh, uh, creative um, 
people, a few people that came from Pixar. And, but the goal was really to just test, you know, whether this is a methodology that could be helpful and augment some of the other existing tools. And this particular tool is very focused. It's a very, it's very focused on perspective taking and theory of mind. Um, and we also aim to do a lot of, a number, you know, some follow on research to compare a fully remote option down the road with in-person therapy using the same curriculum. Um, so this was just, you know, an, an early pilot. It's uh, a four week social skills um, the research uh, study was funded by TAP. The development work um, for this 3D story world was funded by some social impact investors. Um, and also we, um, a, there was a number of neurodivergent employees that were included in this process. And so the eligibility criteria for the research study is diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder, um, the, the current study, we are looking at seven to nine year old children um, that are have verbal communication and the participants obviously must you know, commit to participating in a, a minimum of a 30 minute session each week for four weeks. And the parents complete pre and post surveys and being that it's a remote program, you know, the participants can be located anywhere, um, but they must have access to either an, an iPad or an iPhone and uh, or request to borrow one from our lab. Um, and so this has um, been interesting. Uh, it's been an interesting process. Again, Bray, you know, as we brought together the development process, brought together a lot of experts and uh, professionals that don't normally work together, you know, again, like game designers with autism experts. And um, part of, of what, um, the goal was what was what, what was kind of challenging, you know, it's always the case, I think, when you're working in 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 technology and uh, design in this in this way is is trying to um, embed a lot of the research to make sure that we have something that we can test with research embed so we, you know into the design of the story world and some of the decision points that the kids can make. And so this was one of the first storyboards, just thought it might be interesting for participants to see the process of developing something like this. Um, you know, it starts out with a lot of, of uh, involving expertise, but a lot of, you know, involving also creative writing. And, and again, we had uh, our, our lead uh, script writer, she had worked on Toy Story, the interactive um, a game version. She was the lead writer on, on, on that game. And we sort of, you know, went through a, a, a just lots of different processes with um, storyboards, but again, you know, having to uh, integrate, it, it, this is a very early stage pilot, but integrating the research to be able to test to see if this is something that would be effective or not. And here's some of the, um, in terms of the curriculum itself, here's some of the um, uh, themes that um, were, were we're aiming to teach, and a lot of them, you know, are perspective taking and theory mind skills, asking children, um, trying to, to see if they're accurately interpreting scenes, you know, how are they understanding the feelings and emotions of characters, if we can prompt and um, sort of reinforce a correct understanding, if, um, you know, understanding, recognizing characteristics of friends. Um, so these were, these were all some of the, the themes that are part of this project. And, um, for the research project, it's um, kids are engaging with the story over over a four week period to start, and therapists are um, therapists and researchers are being trained to um, do sort of a, to be they, they are part of this remote therapy process. They're really using this as a tool in helping um, prompt a better understanding of perspective taking skills and theory of mind. Um, we're offering extra support to family, you know, as needed. And then the data will be analyzed so we can look at how, um, if the program's improved, understanding of perspective taking skills and theory of mind, and also how we can um, uh, change the technology and the design and make some improvements for um, the next round of, of research. And so this just gives you a real brief overview for the four weeks, some of the um, uh, themes um, for the four, four sessions. And uh, just wanted to give you a sense also about um, there's so the so the fully remote version there's a, there's another version of this that um, the one that we're testing right now it, a therapist is joining over Zoom and is is very 
hands-on and interactive, but there's, um, I had built a synchro what, what we're calling a synchronization engine. And in the past, it was really used um, for other, other sort of telehealth purposes, including um, patient, older patients with dementia um, that were struggling with working memory exercises in between therapy sessions. And so it's a synchronization engine where you can basically plug in any, um, any sort of app and it, the, a therapist can remotely view in real time what that patient is doing and be able to you know, coach and um, remotely influence their, their experience. And in this case, for this social skills, the, um, the full remote version that was built, you can influence like what the characters say, um, you could send little coaching bubbles and I know from uh, there's been an, uh, some interesting research in the past about um, how thought bubbles could could be helpful to children with autism, especially in understanding the concept of theory of mind. I know there's Henry Wellman and some others, and uh, that have have done some interesting research in the past on that. And um, and then also um, uh, there's there's some some the technology itself has built in some uh, interesting um, tools if a child gets gets an answer wrong where there's kind of a thought bubble um, uh, picture in the head type of technique that's being used. I know Evelyn McGregor um, at all, going back as far as like 1998 had done some interesting research on, on that. And so that was kind of based on some of her work. Um, and in the final session, you know, we're reviewing key scenes, we're repeating some of the probes, probes and also doing generalization exercises to make sure that um, the children, if there's if it's if the data shows that there's progress that's made in their learning, we want to make sure that they're not just memorizing um, some of the techniques they were taught. And so there's that last um, session will include generalization exercises, and then throughout the process, um, parents and you know and kids will give be given the opportunity to uh, give their feedback and input. And there's a pre and post survey as well that will help us. Um, uh, do some of the follow-on research that we needed to uh, to demonstrate this as an effective tool. Um, thought that might also just be interesting to see, like you know, do being developing some a, tool, a therapeutic tool like this. There's still you know a lot of uh, the the type of skills needed. You know, we 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 had included a number of neurodivergent employees um, in this process, and they had input in the design and um, other in the art and some of the technology as well. And it's just is just one thought it'd be fun to kind of quickly go through some examples. So this is you know very simple. There's a scene that involves a mushroom, you know, mushrooms. And so we started out with you know 2D uh, concept art mushrooms and just all these decisions that get made that um, you know end up um, to build something like this, right? And then we had to kind of turn to 2D art, make decisions about which 2D art we were going to go with. And then we had a 3D artist um, do the 3D models, and then. For the characters that needed an animation, then there was you know an animator and rigor, and so there's all these different um, components to building something like this. And here was some of the in the initial concept art. There was all the different options that we um, then tested out with kids and families of what they liked and what they thought was you know friendly and interesting and engaging. Um, and then it, and, and this was then the three. So those were the two, the two D sketches, and then here's the three D model, and that's the final uh, character as the the friendly bee. That ended up um, in the program. Um, so now I'll just uh, so we're yeah don't have a lot more time to go to go it. So I'll just some um, talk then. Um, then there's also been um, so that was the first pilot that we're working on, and that was the research is funded by TAP, um, which we're really excited about. And then we've been working on these. Um, so I started actually in 2017 started doing these inclusive coding boot camps where it was for everyone over the age of. 16, but every team included at least one neurodivergent um, student. And um, we've seen um, you know, a lot of, of transformative experiences with that. It's, it's been really exciting, especially finding students that maybe had you know, applied to 100 plus jobs as employers and got really discouraged and wasn't even sure if they should go to college. So there's some students um, that fit that profile that been attracted to this program because it's been free and it's there's not a lot of risk it's it's a very accessible neurodivergent friendly environment to learn um to find out you know if, if technology is interesting to you and it doesn't mean you necessarily want to be an engineer 
um, it's, but uh, it's been a very open uh, model. And so, um, and, we, and the other thing with this program is that we've invited a number of employers to come speak to the students. And that's been, um, I think, really helpful for the students because they've like Microsoft came and talked about how you, you know, you, apply to us. We want we want people who think differently. We want aut autistic workers. We value them. And you don't have to necessarily be an engineer, but going through this a boot camp like this, you know, would be an advantage because we understand that you at least have some techn technology literacy literacy, but there's all these other roles that you could apply for at companies like Microsoft. And I think that's been really valuable. Um, and so then that um, sort of early work led to uh, uh, Tamar Heller and I it applied to the Discovery Partners Institute, and they funded this um, initiative to expand on some of this work. The Autism Innovation Initiative is broader than the coding boot camps, but the mission um, is just to strengthen the technology and innovation talent pipeline in Illinois by including people with autism spectrum disorders and taking a strength-based approach to training entrepreneurship and workforce development. Um, and uh, one of the coding boot camps um, under the, this program that was that was uh, uh, implemented at the Discovery Partners Institute um, was an intro to therapeutic games, and it was using Unity 3D gaming engine, which is the same gaming engine that was used in this, the social skills to develop the social skills program that I presented earlier. And um, what was uh, really fascinating, there was a, a young gentleman that um, came in, and he, um, he, I don't believe he had any coding experience prior to, to this workshop, um, but he was really interested in games. Um, but again, one in another example, someone just got kind of discouraged, you know, in terms of applying for jobs, hadn't applied to college. I think he was out of high school for two years. Um, and just, it was amazing for all of us, including his peers to just witness like how fast, how, how talented he was and how fast he learned to code. And he finished his, at the end, there was a hackathon that was sponsored, a, you know, corporate sponsored hackathon. And he finished his game an entire hour earlier than everyone else. And then he ended up winning the, um, the grand prize, you know, for best student game. And so that was, um, that was really just uh, amazing experience, I think, for everyone there. And um, so then since COVID, uh, some of the coding boot camps have been moved to an online and we don't have a lot of you know time to some, some interesting um, lessons I've learned through that process which we don't have time to really get into here but I'll just share um, here's uh, there were in November we had uh, an introduction to web design um, boot camp and that was conducted completely online and what was kind of fascinating for me because the, the typical model it's for everyone over the age of 16 and and but we everyone has to embrace you know the 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 um, neurodiversity and be accepting and supportive. And there's at least one neurodivergent um, student in the group. But for what, you know, this group ended up for whatever reason, um, ended up being all neurodivergent students that signed up, um, even though I thought we advertised it pretty broadly. But it was, uh, it was an intro to web design. It was all online. And um, the students um, ended up designing a, and building a website that uh, was specifically tailored for um, sensory-friendly masks um, for for autistic and, and neurodivergent um, individuals, and um, so there was a lot of excitement there. And one of the other things that uh, incidentally happened that um, I feel really uh, good about is there was a student um, that participated. Her name's Arparna, and she has a, a just really brilliant um, autistic student she's got an MBA from Wharton but still has really struggled to get a job and she participated in this program and the instructor just thought she was so talented that he sort of then after the program just volunteered to take her on basically as a mentor and now she's um she's got the skills to basic you know to be a paid uh web developer which and designer which is which is really awesome um, and just wanted to share finally um, that, uh, yeah, with going back to the Discovery Partners Institute, the code, Intro to Coding Games. Um, so this was just a, a quote that um, the student that won the grand prize had given us that was just, again, really, uh, just really wonderful for us was that he, he, he just seemed to enjoy himself so much and his peers loved him so much and was really uh, admired his talent. And he told us at the end that this was the first time he was 
treated like a smart, normal person. And uh, I think it really increased his confidence. And he realized just, wow, there's all these things I could do in the world. And I, I, my understanding is that it changed his perspective too, in, in terms of his options in life and uh, maybe going to college, et cetera. Um, and this the final slide, um, just wanted to bring up. So recently I, I co-founded the Awesome Angels Group. And this is, it builds on some of the work we talked about. I talked about earlier in that there is still just this, when we're talking about innovation and technology, um, I think it's really important. We all know that the statistics around employment and underemployment and unemployment are um, unacceptably high in the neurodivergent. And I, you know, I, I strongly believe that it's really important to find new opportunities and innovative ways for, for economic and financial inclusion. And so um, that's part of what the um, Autism Angels Group is also aiming to do. And um, that's all I have for now. But if you have uh, any questions or feedback or want to follow up, um, you could email me at uh, either of these email addresses. So thank you.